Hey, what's up guys? Um, I'm going to show you how to change the shoes on a caravan or trailer tire. So the shoes are these things right here. It's like the brake, pretty much brake pads. So they just sit on the outsides like this. I'll um, show you how to get to it. This is why I'm changing mine. They're all cracked to the max and not just that, this one has actually completely cracked off. So it's because it, like Tasmania, it was super... Um, super steep areas and sometimes I had to like crank the brakes up heaps and it seems like there was a problem with these this side of the caravan and this side of the caravan was like 100% brake and the other side was like zero so this side got incredibly hot particularly this one here it just it has some problems so I'm going to replace that whole whole piece here so um but I'm just changing the shoes on this one so it's a uh, generally it's a lot cheaper for instance this is $50 for the two so it's a uh, 25 each or I think it's like a hundred and ten dollars for this whole thing so it's literally like half the price just to do the shoes and if your magnet's fine which this one's good and the magnet on this one still seems pretty good but I'm gonna just change the whole thing anyway but the magnet on this is definitely still good so I'm gonna show you how to do it let's uh let's crack into this and I'm also I'm sorry that I'm always shirtless it's just it's really hot here in Australia so um first things first you gotta crack this this fella off best way to do it is get sort of like a flat blade and you just gotta like I've already cracked half this off because I already took these guys out the old ones but you just gotta kind of go around it a little bit so first jack off the tire and then you just want to put that in and give it a couple of hits give it, give it a couple of hits all right that was really easy but um, usually you'll have to uh, knock it a little bit all the way around and uh, make sure no dust gets in that so yeah you just kind of work your way around and knock it uh, try not to just use a hammer like straight onto this because you will buckle it, which I'm pretty sure I've done on one of the sides here. I just couldn't get it off, but it's, uh, yeah, just be persistent. It will it will come out, and it's probably about that deep, if that helps. So even if it feels like you're just hidden and nothing's happening, eventually you will get through there, and it will knock it deep. Like, look at that. It's hardly in, and it gets all the way. It gets pretty deep in there, so you should be able to just keep going until it's, like, about that far in, and then just, yeah, work your way around, keep turning it, eventually it'll come enough out for you to either wobble it out or it'll just pop right off just like that second stage you're gonna need some pliers just like these ones and this will have one of these little bits here will be bent so this one's bent that way so you're just gonna do your best with this it can be a bit tricky to get it perfect but you're just gonna try to bend it straight like that so you're just gonna bend it as best you can and then give it a bit of a knock if you have to to try and get it out um, this is the, the way I usually get it because it's going to be crinkled a little bit just like a, a little crinkled from it bending and then bending back this is how I did it uh, okay so I put this through like that so it's one of those and then straight through like that and then I just hit that with a hammer and it usually knocks it out a little bit at a time or and that's how I get that out and getting it back in, just put that there and just knock it through with a hammer. Or you get a new pin. I think most people usually just get new pins. But let's be honest, that's fine. That's just straight enough. Alright, and then, uh, so this should be on, but not like crazy tight. So you should be able to just use a pair of pliers, open that up. And it should be pretty, uh, pretty loose. Because you want it, when you're tightening these things, you want it to be like, no wobble but you can still like pretty much loose tighten it by hand. So not, not a lot of resistance. See, look at that, that was, that was easy. Practically, I didn't even need a tool. I reckon I probably could have just used my hands. But yeah, see this? See, there's a bit of wobble. You wanna make sure it's like, when you're putting it back together, you want it so it's not, no wobble, but it's not like locked on. See so yeah, there's always a little bit, and then it's just, see that's probably a little more. See, that's perfect, there's no wobble. I don't need tools, you just put the pin straight through. This, this dust is going to be annoying because it's going to get all up in my grease. Check out this place I'm staying while I'm undoing this. It's really beautiful. It's right on a little, little river. Alright. So you want to try to keep the dust and grime out of this the best you can. So I'm going to put it in that fella there. Same with this. So I'm probably going to need two hands for this because it's pretty hard to get a tire off kind of got to lift it and pull it out so I'm gonna just pause it here but um you know I'll I could sort of do it like that see how it kind of comes off like that you just kind of like got to lift it and sort of wobble it off and then it'll be off and then this is a 
This is like the, oh my God, it's just suctioned on there. Oh no. Yeah, make sure you don't get this shit dusty because uh, you do not want gr um, grime in here. And when I say grime, I mean like dust and dirt and sand and all that because you want it to last a little while, as long as you can. And this is the same. If you want to, if you want to replace your bearings, this is how you get it all out. And mine looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, the grease is still looking pretty good, looking pretty thick. So you'll know when the grease needs to be changed, either by it looking really black and gross, or it's really runny. Apparently, as age passes, time passes, it will become runnier, and it becomes kind of useless. So apparently once every 10,000 kilometers. Uh, I'm gonna just cover that so the dust can't get it. All right, I'm gonna take this off. All right, so tire is off. Yours will look like this. Your brakes look like this. So to take this off, you need to take this, this spring off here and then it will open up a lot more. And then you need to take, so once once this is springs off, you just uh, remove this bit here. And that's the, that's the little adjuster. So then you gotta remove these ones, they're just springs. You, all you have to do is on the other side, see how it's poking through there? You gotta push that down. Um, I use pliers for mine. All you have to do is push it down and then turn it. Oh, no dust. Damn, it's dusty, I mean windy. All right, yeah, here we go. This is a good example right here. So this is on the other side. This right here, that bit there, is that bit there. So all you have to do is, it'll be sitting like that. You need to put something behind it so you're not just pushing the, the pin out the other end. And then, so you put something behind it and then compress the spring and turn it so that it can come out. See how it sort of lines up like that? It's like a little uh, little key. You can, it locks in one way and then clicks out the other. If you can see that. So you just have to unlock them by turning it so that it fits through that one way and it'll pop straight out just like that. And that's how they're locked in. Just one there and one there. Oh, this dust is killing me. Hope it doesn't get too much shit in it. Um, all right, let's speed this up. So take those two off, just unlock those. There we go. All right, and then um, this spring is the next one. It should be a, it should be a lot easier when when this is off they can come closer and the springs not so tight so then you should be able to take that off and then this literally just sits through that'll hook in like that and then that will go through there up to there so it'll just hook like that when you're pushing in through there all right so I just finished putting it back off the new the new shoes on so best way to do it is um so say they're like this, you know I'm going to do it in reverse because you obviously got to take your shoes off first, the broken ones. So you take these off, so you probably want to wind that out all the way. This off first, so just pull that up and take that off. It will be easiest if you have supplies or something. There we go, alright so that comes off. And then you can move these up and down. So the next thing is take this off because you can't really move them unless this comes off. So you just put your finger behind and then you can just push that against that. So I use these because it's kind of hard to turn them. So what you want to do is, hopefully I can push my legs to the best I can. So you want to grab that so you can push it in. Put your finger behind so you don't, so the thing doesn't move. And you just push that in and then turn it. And then do that again until you get to the point where it's gonna just pop off, which is pretty much there. Where are ya? There it is. Uh, where are ya? So I'm trying to see where it is. Here's a little further. There it is. So it just pops off just like that. So you just gotta find where they you know, line up. If you get what I'm saying. And I'll just put that back in because I'm putting the new ones on, not taking them off. All right, so once they're off, you just have to take this big spring off, which is gonna be a lot easier when these bottom parts off. So yeah, you just take this, this bit off just like that. 
and then when these two are off that'll really come in so you can just like you can pretty much overlap these two at the bottom so that's really in and then that won't be so hard to take off maybe you use pliers if you need i actually didn't really need to i could just pull that straight off because they were overlapped and then this is literally just sitting in there so that just um that just yeah just pull that off and same with that on the other side you just feed that through you feed that through this so that just pulls straight out and um, the reason why this is all loose and floppy is because there is a spring back here if you can see it see the spring right here so that springs just gotta it's just gotta go over that just to hold it all tight and nipped it together I probably will need pliers no, maybe not maximum effort there we go we just do a little flash for that so that's just um you just got to take that off when you're taking this off because all you gotta do is you just take that spring off and then that just pulls straight out so you straight out that side and then you just got to kind of like you know wiggle it out to get that out and that is that is it and then just come straight off i should probably take this little sticker off oh, i should have done that before the spring's holding it oh well Anyway, that's it. And then you just gotta put the tire back on. And um, yeah, make sure you get that back in. And you pretty much just reverse the process. Make sure you got all nice and snugged up. And yeah, just make sure you wobble it a little bit and then tighten it a little bit, wobble, and make sure it just, just until the wobble's gone. So it doesn't wobble, but it's not like cranked on. And then tighten it a bit with a tool and then just back it off one and then just, just by hand and then just put the, uh, the pin through the bit that just um just through it's got like all these little holes it's got a bunch of them so you should be able to just find one that that like is perfect and if not just like you know move it a tiny bit just you just want the wheel just not to wobble like that sweet spot just in between so it's not grabbing it tight it's not letting it loose it's just nice nice perfect in between but that's it i hope you like how reasonably easy it is just to change these things i'm gonna put these back on and then i'm done with this tire anyway and i'm gonna go to this one I'm using, look at this, look at this sketchy ass jack by the way, it's like a, it's the one out of my car, oh it's so just sketchy, really doesn't inspire confidence that's for sure. If you notice your brakes, like when you put your foot on the brake and you're just easing to a stop and it suddenly grabs and like pulls you back and there's like, it's almost like it's not like a smooth brake, it's like a brake and then grab, that is because this thing is getting too much crap on it. So as you're braking throughout the years or however long, you build up all this crap here, right? All this like soot and shit, which is not great for your brakes, which obviously it is a part of just, you know, braking. But when too much of it gets in this crap, it will like become almost like a, it, it almost grabs it. So it'll, um, it'll be like smooth, smooth, and grab and yank it up. So it won't be like that smooth, increasing brake, increasing brake. It'll just be like crap and just pull really hard. So if you clean all this out with a bit of, bit of degreaser and a paper towel and just clean the clean the magnet and then clean all along here you'll be surprised how much crap you get off and then it'll um like i tried this before when this happened and it definitely solved the problem but it was because my pads were you know, getting destroyed really fast that's why it kept happening to me but yeah that, that that fixed it for me so um if you feel like your brakes just grabbing definitely give that a crack and see if that fixes it for you because it helped me all right so so once you got the wheel on and it's uh spinning free you gotta adjust the wheel from the back so I'll try and show you this the best I can let's just get the flashlight on all right so and I do not trust this jack all right so if you can see hopefully this will allow it there we go see that little spindle this one right there so Right now, it's spinning, there we go. It's spinning freely, right? It's like, there is pretty much, apart from this crap, no resistance. If I give it a spin, it spins really quite nicely. A little bit of brake, obviously. But, um, so that's that's pretty good. I've got it how I want, but I'll show you how you, you adjust it real lickety snappity. So what you wanna do, if you wanna tighten it, which you probably have to at the start, you want to put the screwdriver in and then like push that up with the screwdriver. All right, so if I'm pushing it up, this is so dodgy with one hand. 
holding the filmer, the camera. All right, uh, yeah, let's get that a couple more just to prove my point. There's a little bit of delay with the camera and what I'm doing. <laughs> it's really hard looking through the camera. All right, so now I've done that a little bit, it's probably enough to make a difference. Look at this, now I can't even, I can't even spin it. If I pull it, yeah, nothing. Pretty much immediately stops. So that will give you very, very hot brakes and probably damage them to the point where they start smoking if you continually going. So you wanna kind of get it to that point, I guess, or maybe a little bit less. Well, you know, just when you start feeling that resistance and then you wanna back it off if I can. By the way, if you can get a bigger screwdriver, like a flatter one, it'll make this a lot easier. I was use it, trying to use a knife before, but it doesn't work ideally if you're bending the knife, because you also got to fight against that spring that's pushing against it a little bit. Oh, come on. All right, so I'll see if that's good now. So that's, that's better. It's, uh, it's spinning. But it's still got resistance. So you pretty much want to make it so it feels like it was before for me. So that it's um where are we? So that it's coasting freely, but you're so close to that like resistance. Because you want it to be almost touching. So when you do break, it's just it only has to move a little bit, so it doesn't have to like shock the shock the system, if you know what I mean. And if it feels like it's um if it feels like it's kind of just grabbing, oh, so that is that is nice. I might even touch it up a couple more because you can feel, you can see there's like there is no resistance there. So I might make it so there's just a little bit of resistance, and then when there's a little bit of resistance, you just grab the ha the handbrake. So this is this right here is the connection to the handbrake at the front. At the front, when you have those cables coming up, kind of like this one. If I can zoom in nicely on it, there you go. See how this cable, that metal. Um, metal cable coming to it. So when you pull the handbrake, it just pulls that. So sometimes when you're adjusting it, oh my god, it's windy. And it'll, um, it'll like feel like it's grabbing. So when it when you feel like you've, you've grabbed and you should probably loosen it off, just do this with the handbrake a little bit. Just give it a bit of a push. Because that sometimes, sometimes that'll like recenter it. Because it might be giving you resistance because one side's touching it and the other side like it's just sort of like tilted a little bit. So you don't want that, you want it to be like perfectly centered and then like grab out when, when it's ready. So when you feel the resistance, just push the handbrake and then if it like eases up and it spins again, then you gotta tighten it a bit more. So yeah, just get it, get it so it's nice and tight and then push the handbrake and then if it's still nice and tight, just loosen off a little bit until it starts coasting. And that is what you want. You want that like, that free spin coast that's just like one little click away from being tight. Because it'll probably loosen over time as the um, as you know the brakes start to, to wear away, and um, yeah, you just gotta tighten it a little bit. Just check them out every now and then, like every kind of five thousand, ten thousand k's. Probably every I would say every eight thousand k's, just like jack up a tire, give it a spin, and you know see how close you are. Because it's just a screwdriver, it's easy to check, and it could you know save you save you a lot of money in the future buying new brakes. It's like one side's breaking out the other. Down, it'll like push your RC car one way. So there's actually a really good way of figuring that out. So in your, well, let me get out of here. Oh, okay. So this is how I always figured out which way is best on my car. So if you're your caravan and the back brakes harder on this side than the other side, so the brakes are harder there, it'll push the car, the caravan like that. So the car will, the car's nose will go left. If you get what I'm saying, because it kind of like kind of like, you know, go away from each other. Let me show you like this. So, the brakes on this side break, then it'll pull to the caravan that way, which will make the car go that way. So you'll, you'll feel it like kind of doing that with you. So if you put your foot on the brake and it's not perfectly slowing you down evenly, and you feel like you're getting pushed one direction, it is the opposite direction to where it's braking. So if that side's braking harder than the other side, that side will pull that way and it'll kind of do that so whichever way your nose goes it's the other side that you need to loosen up or the other side the way that the nose goes is the way that you need to tighten if you get what i'm saying it kind of does that i hope that, I hope that helps. it's helped me a bit because yeah 
these these brakes are always very dodgy on this side because we um yeah they got locked on when we first got them. So uh, yeah, I always had to like loosen them a little bit, loosen them a little bit, and then like tighten them and just like all over the place because they were clearly you know falling apart. So um yeah, that was a that was a great way for me to find out what was going on and which side was breaking more or less because yeah we went through Tasmania and it was like crazy steep roads and it was very interesting but um yeah hope that hope that helps and that's how you adjust it and that should be pretty much it then yeah you're pretty much golden but yeah it's uh that's it like and subscribe give me a thumbs up or or not but um catch you guys in the next one hope you like the video